So what if I told you there's an item in Dragon's Dogma 2 that can literally one-shot anything? And a second one that gives you five times the amount of XP you normally get from enemies. That's why today we're gonna cover some of the most amazing secret items you can easily miss, especially since you have to take down a certain boss in a very specific kind of way. Also, quick spoilers ahead, if you don't want to see the boss fight itself and any of the details, just tune off for now and come back at a later date. For everybody else, let's jump right in. But, well, today we're gonna check out the Medusa Head item, which is a special farmable item you can get pretty much on repeat, and it has the power to freeze and make everything turn to stone. Yes, this includes small, but also pretty much any boss in the entire game. So to get this item, you're going to pretty much have to defeat the Medusa boss fight, but in a special way by slashing off its head. And you will find that boss encounter right here at the Collegianus Depths, which is just west of the Bakbatal city. So as you make your way over there, you'll know you're on the right path, as you will see a lot of stoned enemies. Plus, once you reach this location, you will see an entrance to its lair on the side of the road. So it's actually pretty accessible and in plain sight. But for this to work, you have to do two things. First of all, you must play as a thief. It seems that this is the only class that can sever the head. And second of all, you will have to jump on its head, repeatedly hit it with a weapon imbued with electricity damage. For some reason, that's the only way this works. And here you can see I had a different test run in which I used frost damage. It did not work and it already dealt way too much damage for that severed head to be in a good condition. And this also kind of brings us to the third thing you have to keep in mind. You will have to deal that damage to its head while the boss still has a relatively high HP. So if you just do it on the first HP bar, by the time it drops to like the fourth or third one, it should already be enough for that head to be severed. You will know if you did it right, if that head immediately pops off, the boss immediately dies. You will also get this achievement right here, which is also unique. Plus, both of the items that drop from the boss, including its head that you will find by the side of the corpse. And of course, that uh, really awesome bow that we're gonna check in just a little bit. Now, there are a few other tips that I have in case this doesn't work for you. One of them is absolutely use weapons that don't have any elemental effects on them as they don't seem to get overwritten. So just use regular daggers and then have anything in your party like a mage to buff them up with electricity damage. You can easily use the advanced search now as it's been fixed and just get any mage that has electricity boon on it so that it can apply it on your blades and only then start doing the damage. Second of all, if you somehow messed that fight up or you brought the boss to too low HP and the head has been damaged or you defeated it without getting the head, you can go ahead and immediately exit the application and re-enter and this should put you before the boss fight happened, assuming that you didn't finish the fight completely. Or otherwise, the third alternative is to just sleep for about one to two weeks at max and come back to its lair again. As I've said, this boss completely respawns every single time so you can get this item again and again. But with that item in place, now you can go ahead and test it. So this is something you can equip and brandish on your character and I believe it looks really freaking awesome. And once you do have it active on your character's body, you can activate it pretty much just like the lantern with the same shortcut, which will pull off this really awesome Medusa head and anything that you aim this at is going to immediately get transformed into a stone statue of itself. Well, it takes a couple of seconds, but nothing can escape its gaze. You can even use this on, for example, boss enemies. And yes, they will absolutely turn to complete stone. Now, you can shatter them in a split second when the boss is turning into it. But if you leave it like that, it's going to continue to stay in that solid form, which I think is really awesome. Now, be careful because this has a limited use, plus it seems to expire in no more than a couple of days. So, for example, if you use it like three or four times, by the fourth time, typically, it's going to already lose the majority of the power. You can, of course, see if that head still has power in it, even if it started to rot a little bit, if the text mentions that its power is still at full level. If not, it's probably going to end up really soon. But if you place it in any deposit box or any storage, it's going to be preserved like any other item in the game. So maybe it's worth it to keep one in there just in case you need it at a later date. 
But I also tested this against dragons and I couldn't believe it how easy it works. Like, yeah, bosses like these are extremely difficult for various builds and classes out there not for the thief of course because they just ran ham at it but in the case of everybody else this can actually save you so much trouble i believe that this can trivialize some of the toughest challenges in this entire game if you just go with that severed head now i also went ahead and tested the medusa spell bow which is actually pretty interesting because it comes with 100 into strike strength and also quite a lot of knockdown power so this can be a very good option for any well archer out there who also wants to stun lock targets but it has a very interesting secret effect on it too so it will increase your stamina consumption but the upside is that it will give you higher xp or well higher experience whenever you defeat foes with it so this can actually be a decent way of farming XP as an archer, but I just think that the weight on it is really crazy. Plus, there are classes out there that just do it a lot faster via just taking less time to take down foes like the Thief or the Mystic Spearhand. Actually, scratch that, it seems that we're getting significantly higher XP, like 5, 4, 5 times the amount we normally get. So in this case, over 2,000 instead of the typically like 585 on some of these uh, bigger ogres and instead of like the 300 on the smaller ones we get like a thousand one hundred and one not so that's actually a very big one but the problem is that we're consuming so much of that um that stamina bar but at the same time simple normal shots deal so much damage with this thing also using any abilities with this thing forget about it you're going to absolutely burn through the entire stamina bar and i'm almost like level 50 in here so even one ability puts me to sleep right away this isn't sustainable whatsoever but the good news is that you can simply do normal shots and they pretty much take almost like three quarters of an hp bar on some of these mobs maybe not as reliant as some of the other classes but it seems to be pretty interesting if we can fix that stamina problem but there's one more place in which you can use this to finish a quest and have a different ending for it, which is via the side mission called A Case of Sculptor's Block. This actually starts on your very first visit at the Vernworth Noble Quarters. So you're going to have um, Clark over here telling you about a certain sculptor that you have to find in Batal. So once you do reach Batal and visit it for the first time, you will need to head over right here to Fulvio's house and actually speak to that NPC. Once you speak to Fulvio, he will tell you to meet him in this place right here, very close to a griffin's nest, as you'll have to fight that griffin to give, well, Fulvio inspiration for his sculpture. If you pay attention to his dialogues, actually, before that, he tells you that it would be much better for him and he could make a much better statue if you actually first turn that enemy to stone rather than prolong the fight for him to, yeah, take all of the sketches that he needs. So in this case, that's why you will want to use that Medusa's head. Once you're done with this, you can head over back to Fulvio's house back in Batal and then just speak to him, which is going to bring you to the final portion of the mission, and that is to go to the unveiling of the statue back at Clark's estate. So you will have to make your way all the way back to Vernworth, all the way to that noble district and go into this house right here. And from here, head over to the second floor where, yeah, that unveiling is going to take place. Now, unfortunately, as much as I tried, I didn't get the good ending out of this simply because, yeah, the mission got bugged for me. So whichever save file I used, it always ended the same as in, yeah, Fulvio would not see the griffin spawn even though it was there in front of him. And he would always behave as if there were no griffins spawning at all. So he would just use his imagination for the sculpture, which is why he, yeah, kind of messed up the revealing. And of course, I got the bad ending out of this quest, which only gives you about 7,000 gold. I mean, that's still pretty okay. But if you do manage to finish this off properly and you do get him to recognize that during that mission you stunned the griffin, you will probably get a much better reward, which I would definitely love to know if you get it. As at this point, I will have to start a complete new save file to make this happen. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.